Red Pill BS or the true masculine initiation. So let's talk about this uh, this topic as I don't really want to see myself as an manfluencer in this manosphere kind of space or niche because what I like to talk about is more deeper spiritual healing and diving further into the path of shamanism and reconnecting with with our ancestors and how that could heal a certain level of traumas within ourselves. But however we do live in a time of the emotional dark ages where lots of men, young men, can't really seem to figure out their place in the world. They struggle, they suffer. In the United States alone, every 20 or 30 minutes a man is done living his life. Men are pulling away from dating, working, making money, fitness and all of that. So the mental health within men is definitely an issue. But then we look at the whole red pill BS. And when I talk about BS, I talk about belief systems. And I don't wanna say that what you hear in this kind of space isn't valid. Because every philosophy holds a level of truth. You could take the red pill, you could take the blue pill, and when you take the blue pill, you kind of like stay in a level of ignorance. And when you take the red pill, you go on this rabbit hole to find a level of truth and understanding of our reality. Now, when it comes to, let's say, the masculine, the feminine, and all of that, I think it's safe to say is that the masculine is being born at the bottom of the valley. And they have to climb the mountain because at the top of the mountain there we have the beautiful divine feminine and the divine feminine has to prevent itself from falling down this mountain and lowering her standards while the man has to climb the mountain through sacrifices and, and suffering because that's the process of initiation into his true authentic self but about this initiation i mean or the rite of passage. In the past, men used to go into war, right? And to become a warrior. And even if you think about movies like 300, they were like these tiny little boys. And when we take on the, on the hunter gatherers of our Asian past and Asian civilizations and tribal communities, when a young boy was starting to grow older, maybe 12, 13, 14 years old, he would send off into the woods and he had to survive out in the wilderness, fighting off wild predators, wolves, the bears, and all of that kind of stuff. And when he would be able to come back alive, he would can join the hunters and the warriors out in battle. So that's how you go from boyhood into manhood. But we are not living in this kind of day and age anymore. So the rite of passage for men is different. But I think it's now also safe to say is that we live in a different time. We live in a time of psychological and spiritual warfare that everything we get exposed to within our 3D reality is doing everything it can to lower our consciousness and self-awareness. Basically, your personal identity and self-image is completely created and developed from what has been projected on you from your parents, your ancestors, and they got it from their parents and so forth. So if you go like 10 generations deep, you could look and see that you are currently a result or an outcome of over 4,000 different ancestors that has formed your current image and whatnot. But right now we have an overstimulation of information or what our reality is and should be is that we can start to feel lost and confused and we tend to lose ourselves within this realm. So what do we do next? I think also what you see is that through our ignorance we go out, we venture out in the world, we start working, we earn a bit of money, we start into romantic relationships and we get traumatized because we tend to believe that relationships is unconditional, it is a fairy tale, we are in Disney La La Land, 
And then we wake up to reality that almost every relationship is based on a transaction. That everyone expects something from the other person. And then what is really conditional and unconditional? So we wake up to this truth, to this reality that nothing really in human relationships is really truly unconditional. Only cats and dogs, they love you unconditional until you stop feeding them. But for men and women, relationships always hold some sort of a transaction. Now, personally, when I look back to my own life, I think I already woke up to reality for my parents. They went through an a really painful divorce and especially for my dad he suffered tremendously from this divorce and going through all these cases in courthouse of over the custody I had my first two cases in courthouse before my age of 12 years old in order to be able to live with my dad but my dad was being labeled as narcissistic because he had lots of emotional neglect and emotional abuse experience within his own childhood so that's really what he knew but of course I, I, I got also got this out of balance like I got the example of my dad of just working hard and be able to suppress everything and all of that and that forms a part of your identity your survival mechanism that's how you go and get out in the world but then you can also lose touch with a different kind of energy let it be the divine feminine energy and that can also help us to understand something within us as well so when we looked at this whole red pill kind of community i think it's almost like the opposite of feminism for women and let it be the red pill like the andrew tate kind of philosophies towards men we must open up and realize accept reality as it is but i think we can also move further and beyond of only like focusing on our building muscle and money and our wisdom but through this wisdom we can initiate ourselves even further and deeper into different states of consciousness and realities and spiritual realms because i think personally that will be the next stage of our human evolution whether you're man or woman and if that will be our path that's really how we can win this true battle of the psychological and the spiritual warfare that is currently being played out in the world and we all play our part we all suffer to some extent but we must embrace the suffer to go through our rite of passage to go through our initiation because our light can only enter where it hurts the most so we must embrace that trauma we have experienced whether it be you know within our romantic relationships and all of that we have experienced so far the loss of finances or business or status or when our ego gets crushed our personal identity get crushed let it represents a moment of death and through this death of dying something through this letting go of a fragmentation we can embrace another kind of version of ourself and that's the true initiation within our soul let it, let it be like the shamanic initiation when we can open up to different parts into our multidimensional self and we do that of course by going into inner child healing soul retrieval and chest healing where we can really heal these traumatic experiences that have been projected on us now of course there is this 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 truth like yeah sure we must be focused on building muscle and money but also wisdom because that will really build up our immune system towards the different kind of illusions we live under the different kind of spells we live under let it be the manipulation we get exposed to and the gaslighting we get exposed to and we can see it more for what it is and how faster we find acceptance in this how 
faster we can evolve and grow above it. So as we are doing our part in the world, as we are focusing more on ourselves, building up our true values of what it is that we can do as men, we are climbing the mountain, eventually we could see that we are actually becoming the price and not the other way around. Until we find an equal match to someone who take the full responsibility and accountability for herself to also realize it's not only upon us to really to build true authentic relationships but at the end there's always something karmic to learn within relationships as well and maybe you could say well it is a true soulmate or a twin flame or whatever fantastic beautiful but within these relationship dynamics we must also come to terms if someone really triggers us something that that is also part of the transactional dynamic as well but that is and goes much further than the superficial things of what we can provide towards each other mentally emotionally financially but then we go further into what it is that we can provide towards each other spiritually. And that's also truly something that I want to believe in as well. It's not a fairy tale, it's challenging, but I believe that it will be the next stage of growing in consciousness. And we can only do that when we take the responsibility and the accountability within our own initiation where we move further and beyond the superficial stuff of what has been currently being preached in the red pill manosphere kind of communities yes there's truth that has been valid to it sure but there are different layers as well and that's exactly what i am talking about here on this channel where we explore more about our Northwest European spiritual and cultural heritage, our patterns from our ancestors and how more we embrace that, how more we can continue to develop ourselves even further. So at the same time, you will also find shamanic journeys here. These are basically like meditations that will dive deep into the subconscious minds, but also we will dive further into the the spiritual heritage and the culture from our Northwest European ancestors around Germanic Norse paganism, uh, the shamanism from our land here. Uh, we talk about the healing ancestral lands, uh, our patterns through inner child healing, soul retrieval, ancestral healing. And that's really how we can continue to evolve as well. So if this has your interest, you know what you've got to do. And at the same time, I will be also further sharing more philosophies from the poetic era, the Havamal and the runes as well, as they can serve as tools of dish divination. So uh, yeah, a lot of things that will be covered here on this channel. So I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care for now.